Today's scripture reading is going to be from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20, and that is on page 725. <coughs> When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you, Jared. Well, happy Mother's Day. I'm glad all the mothers are here, and I'm glad their kids are here, their husbands are here, their, everybody else that's connected with them is here, because this is a great time to be able to worship God. It's always a special day, and uh, everybody's had a mother, right? Did you know that? You, 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 you did have one, so uh, they are... Uh, They are around, and it is a very good thing to be able to honor them because they don't always get much recognition. I'm excited about next week because uh, next week there's going to be Senior Day, and so you're going to get to hear a lot of the, I call them kids because I'm old, but I mean, (laughs) the ones that are growing now and that are ready to uh, graduate, and uh, we're going to get a chance to hear them in our service, and it's going to be a really good time just to be able to listen to what they have to say. Today I wanted to talk to you about Mary, and so the story that we're beginning with is the story of Jesus' birth. You may recall that uh, the angels had come to Mary, and they had told her she was going to have a, have a child, and, and this was going to be God's child, and so they uh, let her know that ahead. She goes through the pregnancy, gets right about time to deliver, and there's a census, and they have to go to Bethlehem, and they get there, and sure enough, there's no place for them to be able to stay. And so Jesus is actually born in one of the stables that's around there. We don't know the time of the year or the exact date of when that is, but it's got to be a really difficult time for her. She already knew it was going to happen because God had said angels are going to, angels come and the angels told you this is going to happen. And very much she believes what the angels have said. And so she knows this is going to happen. She knows this is going to be her child. What she didn't know is that angels come to rejoice and angels come to shepherds in the field. And angels come and they tell them that there's been a child born. And so as she's finally gotten through the birth and tried to make the nest in the barn or the stable, and uh, there's a knock on the door. And it's, it's amazing because there's shepherds there. And the shepherds come in, and they don't know who they are. Says, okay, great visitors the first night when we've just now had a baby and just now trying to get everything cleaned up. And But they're there because they're all excited. They have great news. And they tell about the angels that came. Glory to God in the highest. There's been a king who's been born. And they're so excited about all of this. And so they tell about how the angels came. And how they have now come to see this new king. Because this has got to be one of the most important things. If God announces this from heaven. And as Mary sits there and tries to figure out all of this, she's got to be confused by the fact that shepherds are there. She might have known her child was going to be special because that's what God had said. But now all of this about shepherds and now all of this about her child. And she realizes she's going to have an interrupted life. There's going to be a lot more people who are going to know about the fact that she's had a king. She's had a baby and... And she begins to treasure all these things. Well, what things is she treasuring? I would say all of it. 
I mean, the fact that angels came and announced to her in the first place, the fact that angels have appeared to shepherds now, and especially that, because now you can see where shepherds have come, and, and it's been announced again, and, and they've come to be able to praise and worship and tell her that God still sees her, that God's in her life, and that this child is from God, and that not only does she know, but they know also, and this is going to be spread throughout everywhere. And maybe she treasures the fact that there's no room for them and that they're in a stable. And, okay, someday we're going to laugh about this, right? You have a lot of those kind of stories that uh, it may not be funny right now, but someday we're going to laugh about this and tell about all those times than when life wasn't so easy and life was more difficult. In fact, that's probably the stories you're going to tell your kids today, Right? It's the ones about, I remember back when you were growing up and you were a terror. Or you were, yeah, maybe they'll be nicer to you. But uh, there's a lot of those kind of stories that go around too. And it seems like that's what families have is, is not just, boy, everything was perfect and we had perfect children and there was never any problem. It's, no, let me tell you what life was really like. And we praise God for that anyway. Because it's such a great thing to be able to realize that that's who God is, that he's in our life. And even when we're sitting in a stable and thinking about the fact that, you know, God promised this child, but what now? The fact that God shows up again because he's already announced it to shepherds and shepherds have come and they said, this is precious. This is beautiful. This is wonderful. Because here you are. And you have had a king. And she's got to treasure all these things. She's got to wonder about it because it doesn't seem quite right, of course. And then we see the next time when we really read about Jesus is when he's 12. And they went to Passover every year. And so as they go to Passover, you realize... What happens? They, they are a religious family that goes to worship, and Jesus was very much a part of that worship. And as they go to worship, Jesus stays behind in the temple and begins asking the scribes and the chief priests about different things. And uh, it's three days. Now, have you ever lost a child for three days? We get excited when we can't find him for just an hour. And they lost a child for three days. Makes you feel like a bad mother and a bad father. Because we don't know where he is. We thought he'd be with friends. And, you know, he's always been good, but, you know, not now. And we should have been watching. And all the self-blame comes in. And they finally trace their steps back. And they find Jesus in the temple. And he's not embarrassed. He's not ashamed. He's not lost. The parents are the ones who's lost. The scriptures in Luke 2 and verse 42, and it says, after three days they had found him in the temple sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, why were you looking for me? Did you not know I had to be, that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he had spoken to them. And he went down with them and he came to Nazareth and he was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Yeah, she doesn't understand this whole thing. What happened here? You've always been a good kid, and then all of a sudden, one day now, we can't find you for three days? And he is not the least bit concerned. Her accusation, why have you put us through this? Why have you caused us this kind of distress? Did he know that would happen? Every child knows that would happen. You know when mom's going to be mad. Right? 
you're going to be in trouble when you get home because we already know those things. And you're not going to be where you don't know what mom wants. She wants you to call home. She wants you to be in touch. She wants to know where you are every single minute of every single day. And to be missing for three days. But Jesus is doing something important too. And rather than being upset at him, she treasured the difficulties and the hardships in her heart. She may not understand because he's been sitting in there in the temple all the time. Here he is. I mean, among all the scribes and answering questions and asking questions, and he said, didn't you know I must be in my father's house? She knows Jesus is from God. She knew that all along, and so maybe she would have guessed that and, and searched the temple first, but it's kind of unusual. Yes, they're a very dedicated religious family, and yes, they go to Passover every year, and yes, they're there, and Jesus has shown an interest in all of these things. And she looks and she treasures because God has consumed her life. She is dedicated to him 100%. Her treasure is not in physical things. Her treasure is in her children. In fact, if you ask a lot of moms, the treasure isn't really in the stuff that they own around them. Their treasure is in their children. Yeah, not the husband. For some reason, not the husband at all. It'll be in their children. That's the ones that they treasure most. And they feel like they are the most important thing. And that becomes her treasure because she can see God working in her life. Most children are the treasure of their mother. They invest a lot. And you don't ever want to get between mamas and babies. That is the most dangerous place in the world. It doesn't matter what mamas and babies there are. Uh, mama is going to defend her baby. And so whether it's a bear cub or whether it's a little baby, you better have permission. And those babies are extremely, extremely important. We do see God working in her life, and God trusts her. And it can't have been easy. But we also see that she treasures the things of God, and that those become extremely important for her. And she would do anything for her children, but she would do anything for God, including raise a child that's his that seems to have a whole different agenda as opposed to what she was thinking he should do. Her response is to God, and it's tremendous how we see that kind of dedication. And I think really that's what we should do today. Well, we ought to respond to God. If you can ever grasp how a, a mother feels about her child, it's how God feels about you. And how a mother wants her child to respond, that's how God wants you to respond to him. With that complete dedication and trust that you would always look out for their best interest. We choose what to treasure, right? It doesn't say she found a treasure of Jesus. It says she treasured. It's a verb. She decided she was going to make this her treasure. Treasure is not something that you find. I mean, yes, sometimes you can find treasure, but the way it's used here, treasure is something that you make because you make this person your treasure. And that's exactly what Mary has done. She has made, she has treasured not just Jesus, but also these other incidents. As painful as they might be, she has treasured these other incidents of sitting in a stable and wondering, how am I ever going to take care of the Son of God? Or going home and realizing, I've lost the Son of God. What if we don't find him? I mean, God's everywhere, right? How can you... Yeah, that's a whole other theological question. We'll have to deal with that some other day. But how we act about it matters. The way in which we perceive it, the things that we do are what matters. We make it a treasure when we pay attention, when we protect, when we 
make that most important in our life. When we focus on a particular thing, we make that our treasure. And Jesus talks about this idea of treasure. Matthew 6 and verse 19 He gives us a teaching about this. He says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so it's a warning about what's valuable, about the things that we have. Don't lay up treasure in a place where it's not going to last. I mean, you might treasure grass, but it's going to die, right? You mow it, you cut it, you water it, it's going to get hot. (laughs) You're not going to keep it. And so he says, make your treasure the most important things in your life so that they are in a place that you're not going to lose them. And everything that we do here on earth, every way in which we do that, Either somebody can steal it, or it's going to fall apart. We're going to lose it. And so rust and thieves destroy almost everything. If it's valuable, people are going to want it. They're going to want to steal it and take it from you. Because they can see the value of what you have. and What you treasure is where your heart will be. It will be what's most important to you. And we're going to feel passionate about that. We're going to feel like that's most important. (coughs) Excuse me. So what do you spend your time on? It'll come back in a minute. What do you spend your time on? What do you work for? I saw this. Jesus is a treasure which few souls can find. For it's hidden. And the world loves what sparkles. Is that what happens to us? Do we love what sparkles? Or do we really love what what God does? What's most important there? Jesus says we can build a treasure in heaven. How do you do that? How do you build a treasure in heaven? We can treasure heavenly things that are not physical. We can treasure the things of God. It's like what Mary did, those incidents that happen, those details that we see. It's all in the way in which we see things go. And those things may be difficult for us, but those may be the very things of God. We treasure the people of the church can be very important. Try this again. Thank you. We are able to build this treasure. (laughs) And we are able to treasure the things of God. This church becomes so important not because it's a church and we don't treasure the building. We don't treasure the organization. We don't treasure the, the ground that it sits on. We treasure the people who are in it because that's really what the church is about. And so many people, when they get upset at the church or upset at something that happened and they feel like it's not right and it's not fair, they get mad at the organization. And they leave the people. You're getting it confused. Yeah, there's times when things may not go the way that we think that they should. I think everybody's probably had that at some point in your life. Whether it's the church or whether it's a school or whether it's an organization or whether it's on your job, you might disagree with people at some point. But this is the one place where you treasure the people and you get to keep them. If it's on your job, well, they're friends, but eh, once you leave that job, you don't keep those friends. 
If it's people in school, well, you're going to go on. You're going to graduate. You're going to do other things. And yeah, they're important, but they're not as important as... And there's more things that we move on to. We treasure worship because that's important as a connection to God. We treasure prayer because that's a way in which we talk to him. We treasure doing things with people and for people. We have the treasure in our heart. So what do you treat as precious? Maybe it's the memories that you've had of things that you've done. Maybe it's the memories of other people. Some of those hard memories that we saw God. We saw him working in our life. We saw how difficult life was, and yet we realize and we know that God was there every single time. How incredible it is to know that. We treasure trophies, right? Is one of these sitting on your mantle? Well, not many people have one of these trophies, I guess, but maybe there are some trophies. You know that bowling trophy or that golf trophy or a trophy that you got just for participating because we don't want anyone to feel like a loser. You know, the one that says you're a winner, you're important, you're special, and we proudly display those things because that's what we have won. It says something about us. It defines our life. We are professional. We won. We were better than anybody else on that day. Of course, there's been a lot of days since then. And so, yeah, that's the way it goes. Those treasures are not going to be forever. They all fall apart. You can have the medal. Did you get your picture on the cereal box? But that treasure doesn't stay, does it? Because somebody else is going to come along and, and set a new one, and their, their new record's going to be set. So how do you treasure a God moment? I think you let it mean something to you. You look around and you realize this is what God is doing in my life. This is what God is doing here. And that there are those times when prayer is answered, and it's answered in such a powerful way that you're able to feel like this is really God at work right now in my life. I think moms feel that a lot because they can see as their child grows up, maybe they don't have every answer for how to do things, but somehow it's a gift God has given them. And there are other people around them or gifts God has given them as well. And they're able to do so many things. The treasure really is in people. In relationships, not in things. It's a concept and principles that we believe in. We sometimes think treasure is universal. If it's a treasure, then everybody's going to want it. But I'm not sure that's always true. Some things might be that way if it's a trophy. Some things might be that way just because, like a you know, a brick of gold or something like that. It would it would be valuable no matter who holds it but it's not personal. And are those treasures that are personal? When someone's been married for 50 years, it's because they found a treasure in each other. And 50 years is short around here. We have some in the 60, 65 range. How did they get that? Well, it's because they treasured each other. And they found a way to make that person a treasure. Well, and other people may not have realized that they may not have known that. They didn't get the treasure because they didn't see it. And you don't see it until after 40 years you realize, hey, we've got something. We've got a treasure here. But they have been at it for that long and you realize it's the way we treated it. It's what we did. We make someone a treasure by the way that we value them. We make someone a treasure because of what we do with them. And there may be a treasure that we're able to find with God because of how we value him and what we do with him as well. You may not realize that until you fall in love with them. But then you treasure them, you value them, and the treasure just gets bigger and bigger. And other people are able to see that. See, family is one of those things that becomes this huge treasure that we're able to realize. And it's always amazing how it happens. 
Jesus' family was different. He went into ministry, right? And not all of them believed in him, but Jesus' mother always followed. She was always aware of where he was. Maybe she wasn't right there with him, but she always knew. And his brothers may not have been his greatest followers at the beginning, but I think you see them following after that and able to be there. But that was much, much later. You realize Jesus, when he gets to the cross, has trained his disciples with what to do. As he hangs on the cross, there is this scripture in John 19 and verse 25. It says, But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother and his disciples whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Jesus had a treasure in a relationship. He had a treasure in his mom, and he had trained his disciples. But it wasn't just training for a job. It is so personal and so important and so touching. How do you train someone to be a son for your mother? And yet that's what Jesus had done. As he looks from the cross at John and at Mary, he says, I'm giving you two to each other. Because family's important. And you've both understood that the will of God in your life is most important. You've both understood that you would stand at the cross of a son that's being crucified, of a Savior that is losing his life in order to save the world. And you would both be here and realize this is what's most important. And as Jesus does that, we realize how important church must have been, how important this family must have been, how important his relationships must have been to be able to do this. Because they're all mixed in together, right? It isn't that, well, I've got my family at home and then I come to church and try and not let them know what goes on in my family. And then I've got my job over here and I try and not let my church or my family know what goes on in my job. And then I've got my recreation and we split everything apart so that we don't know how to be. But for Jesus, it's all the same thing. The way I live with my family is the way I see God working in my life. And the way I live with my disciples and the training that I would do and the work that I would do with them is the way I live my life and how I see God working in my life. And it's all the same thing. See, church is a treasure because of the people inside. And I think Jesus would have done that. Jesus was a treasure, and most people still don't get it. Until forever is your final home. Life is one constant treasure war. Today, will you pursue the treasure of earth or the treasure of heaven? There's a whole lot of things connected with Jesus, with believing in him, the eternal life, the kingdom of heaven, the forgiveness of sins, him being the the savior of the world, the redemption that we're able to see, the relationships and the people that we bring together. And the question becomes, are you a child of God? Because that's exactly how he wants to see us as his children. He values you like a mother values you. If you haven't experienced that, I hope someday you can. And how does a child respond to such love? Well, some are rebellious and belligerent, and they don't want to do anything that you say. They're going to prove you can't control me. They're very disobedient. And some are going to love God back with that same kind of devotion that he has for them. But you have to learn how to do that. You have to learn how to treasure him as well. And so let me encourage you to build the relationship. See, that baptism and making of a covenant is important, and you value that. 
and the worship and the praise that we would give to God are important and we would value those things because it's what we get to do with God. And the prayer and the confession are what we're able to do with God as we talk with Him and understand Him and as He then pours out blessings for us. What an incredible thing it is to be part of the family of God because it's all personal. It's all things that He brings together. And so as you look at Jesus and at Mary and as his early life, it's, it's incredible to realize it wasn't all easy for Mary. Even though she had the Son of God, the guy who could do every miracle that ever was, she still had to change diapers. She still had to get his food. She still had to clean up. She still had to, yeah, all of it. Because that's what you do for somebody that you love and that you care for. And how incredible it must have been as she realizes and watches him grow. And as she later on realizes he's the savior of the world. And maybe you've grown up with that, seeing your parents and realizing that they believe in this God. And maybe it's time for you to as well. Because he is the one who has to win the treasure war. Otherwise, rust is going to take it all. People may want to steal what you've got if you're happy. But when what you've got is from God, they can't take that. You just get to share it. And that's what I wanted to do with you today. If we're able to help you with this relationship with God to find the real treasure, would you come talk to us while we stand in this?